As far as I know, the, the policy making process in Hong Kong is uh, more or less fit in into the framework of what you call is uh, ideal policy making. Uh, but of course, different terms of government will have uh, different styles. And some would like to uh, doing more desk work uh, research. And uh, some would like to have uh, more public engagement. But I would say more or less is the same. And um, in Hong Kong, we have a, 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 a pretty unique situation is that, uh, say, uh, for elderly policies, we have a commission which is called uh, Elderly Commission, which is a high-level commission uh, which advises uh, all policy areas to the government. And uh, so it, uh, the commission uh, uh, is represented by the most of the important bureaus uh, in Hong Kong government. And so uh, Elderly Commission, I would say, is a uh, breeding ground for some uh, policies and also will uh, monitor and safeguard the whole policy uh, making process. And this is quite unique in Hong Kong because uh, I travel uh, quite a lot overseas and um, uh, many of times they don't have a commission or committee uh, being specified for elderly policy, which is quite unique in Hong Kong. And also they are uh, always ama uh, being amazed by uh, the uh, high level representation by the uh, different bureaus and also the participation of different bureaus uh, in a commission which is uh, actively participating in the uh, elderly policy making. Uh, I would like to take an example, which is our elderly service program plan, which is not a very sexy name, but uh, actually it's very important because uh, we, we want to make a framework for the government uh, uh, so much so that uh, we can uh, uh, take care or handle the aging population for the coming 20 years. So uh, in the process, we engage a consultancy ter uh, a team uh, which is actually uh, an uh, academic body. And so they will do the, program, uh, the problem identification and the problem analysis. And during that uh, three years, uh, they are actively engaging with different stakeholders, especially those uh, NGOs who are running uh, elderly services. And also they interview the user, uh, they uh, make extensive engagement with the uh, family carers. And uh, so uh, for the problem identification and the analysis, uh, they are doing a perfect job. But then um, uh, our, our commission, the elderly commission, will help them to engage the public uh, very vigorously, which is very important because uh, even though the academic identify all the problems or even suggesting uh, some solutions, uh, if the public uh, they, uh, they, they was not being engaged well and they are not being informed well and they don't have the opportunities to voice out their ideas and uh, even their green faces. Um, the, the, the whole process uh, of policy making will be very much hindered uh, when the government uh, push out all, uh, 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 all the uh, recommendations. So uh, our commission um, uh, started a uh, public consultation with the public uh, uh, very vigorously. Uh, in Hong Kong, we have uh, 18 uh, administrative districts, so we, uh, we went to uh, various districts uh, uh, holding uh, various uh, town hall meetings. Uh, we engage with the stakeholders, and uh, so whenever we receive any invitation to uh, uh, engage uh, with uh, uh, various groups of people, uh, we will receive them. Uh, this process of uh, public engagement is very important uh, since I know that one of the eight stages is building public support and legitimacy. And uh, if we don't have uh, the public support, we'll never have the legitimacy to uh, uh, implement all the recommendations. And uh, we uh, develop 20 major recommendations to the government. And within each recommendation, we have uh, quite a number of uh, uh, sub-recommendations. So uh, 
it, it, it is a quite a big bunch of uh, recommendations uh, of in various uh, policy areas. So it will be uh, of uh, utmost importance uh, to have all the publics to understand all the recommendations and they will uh, fully uh, accept these and will support the government to implement this. One of the major areas in the process uh, we would like to uh, push forward is what we call is an aging in place uh, policy. That means uh, we let the uh, elderly, especially the retiree, to age uh, in their place of choice. Uh, I would say, which is not the mainstream thinking uh, of our service uh, a few years ago. So how we change the culture, how we change the acceptance level of this kind of uh, policy uh, 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 direction uh, is, is of utmost importance. So I would say this is uh, one, one of the eight process uh, which I personally believe that it is of uh, the most importance. As I just mentioned, uh, building public support and legitimacy uh, is the most important part. But also, it is the most difficult part. Uh, uh, it is uh, quite, I would say, uh, for policymakers, uh, we, we always uh, receive uh, various opinions and uh, even criticisms from the public uh, for the present uh, policy. So uh, to identify a, a, a policy area to improve, it is actually not very difficult. Even finding solution is not the most difficult part. But uh, to change the cultures, to change the belief, and also to uh, make sure that the public buy in on the policy change, I would say is the most difficult part. I think understanding uh, the population is very important. So uh, I always uh, would like to engage with academics like you uh, because a good research uh, is the uh, starting point of uh, every policy change. And talking about aging in place policy, uh, mm. well, we need to put all these uh, research data uh, into something that the lay person can understand easily. And uh, so back to aging in place, uh, um, during the process of our public uh, engagement and also uh, uh, buying in section, um, basically, I'm using two uh, very important figures uh, to engage the public, uh, to let them understand, and also hopefully uh, they will accept uh, our policy change. One is the high institutional rate uh, of our uh, uh, elderly population. That means we have 6.8% uh, of our older folks staying in various kind of nursing homes in Hong Kong and which is the highest in all the OECD countries or areas. So this is one figure. And the other figure is uh, uh, they, they, uh, our research team um, make a very good uh, survey uh, asking all the old folks uh, whether you would like to stay at your own place where you are living uh, while uh, you are getting frail one day. And if you ask 10 persons, more than eight, of them will say yes, definitely yes. So they don't like to uh, stay in the nursing home for their uh, later stage of their life, which is uh, uh, very convincing. So I'm, I'm, I, I would try to use two figures to illustrate the uh, paradoxic uh, situation in Hong Kong. While most people, they would like to age in place, but at the end of the day, we have highest percentage of our older population staying in various kind of nursing homes. So I'm, I'm trying, what, what, what I did uh, during all the town hall meeting is uh, I put up do, these two figures and asking the public what's happened to our policy. How come most of you would like to stay at your own place of choice? But end up, we have the most people most uh, elderly people stay in nursing homes. So uh, what I'm advocating at that time is we must have some policy areas which is not well aligned 
so much so that we end up with this uh, uh, unsatisfactory uh, condition. And so um, I would say a, a very important process uh, uh, during the policy change uh, is to um, get hold of some good figure, good data, good research, and then digest it uh, into something that uh, ordinary folks uh, in the street can understand. And, and then try to convince them to change. And what um, they are demanding is something that the government can steer. And then at that time, I would say, OK, we have a number of recommendations to make sure that uh, we can respect your view. And uh, this process of uh, uh, building up the legitimacy, I would say, is the uh, most important. And also, uh, I personally think it is a very effective way to change the culture uh, of a population too. And uh, so during the uh, public consultation stage, uh, uh, we must include uh, various kind of so-called minority. Uh, it is important because uh, it is a way to show that uh, we really care. Of course, the majority view is important, which is uh, basically it is uh, trying to build the uh, legitimacy of a policy change uh, by getting the majority view. But in the process, we can't neglect the minority. And so, uh, uh, taking the same example of aging in place uh, policy change. And we can't disregard that uh, there are people who are being better care in the nursing homes. So uh, while we are pushing the aging in place policy, we must make sure that we, are, we continue to build uh, nursing homes to provide adequate places. If not, Various kind of uh, conspiracy theories will, uh, will, will, will arise, and some even blaming the governments to shift the responsibility uh, from building uh, uh, adequate number of nursing homes, providing adequate places uh, for nursing home uh, who, who need the res uh, nursing home uh, care. So um, um, we, we, during the process, uh, at the same time, we must ensure the government uh, will be in full gear uh, in pushing to uh, getting adequate uh, land supply and uh, adequate funding, adequate uh, providers uh, to run those uh, nursing homes, which is very important. And I would say for this uh, important uh, initiative, uh, we are not only talking, we need to show to the public. While we are pushing the aging in place policy, we show to the public that uh, we never stop, even we, we gear up to build more nursing home places. Uh, definitely we need uh, more land and uh, uh, to build various kind of uh, aged care facilities. It's not only nursing homes. Uh, we need a lot of daycare centers uh, in different estates. And so uh, we developed a concept called the estate-based uh, aged care facilities development. That means uh, we, we don't want to uh, only building uh, uh, those uh, big nursing homes. We need some small daycare center scattered in every uh, housing estate in Hong Kong to make sure that uh, on one hand, we provide adequate uh, places for nursing home, for res residential care. On the other hand, we are supporting the community service adequately, so much so that people can really age uh, uh, in their place of choice, which is in most cases in Hong Kong uh, are the housing estates. So um, adequate land is very important. Of course, labor is also very important. And I would say these are two big mountains we need to climb in Hong Kong. Uh, uh, we do have a bit of money, but uh, we don't have uh, adequate land, and we, and we are lacking uh, uh, labor supply. And at the present moment, uh, we, the vacancy rate uh, of uh, various kind of nursing homes are up to nearly 20%, which is huge. Uh, there's a huge gap uh, for labor supply. 
So uh, we need to do a lot of things to make sure we have uh, uh, adequate land supply. So uh, the government has uh, done uh, uh, very thorough uh, public consultations to make sure that uh, we have uh, various strategies. And also uh, we reinstate the uh, planning ratio back into our town planning process, so which is also very important. And our government is even willing to use the money to purchase some commercial facilities uh, to run those uh, com community centers, as I, as I just mentioned. And back to the labor supply, I think uh, it must be a multi pro approach. So uh, we need to uh, uh, make sure that the, the whole image and also the professional standard of uh, aged care uh, is being elevated to attract uh, various uh, labor force, including uh, 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 our uh, young people and also even the ethnic minority group and uh, we need to attract them and also we uh, we need to uh, increase the salary so uh, our government uh, did that uh, a, a year ago and uh, but at the end of the day because uh, uh, during the process of uh, aging population um, uh, the strengthening of uh, the labor uh, force is one phenomenon which we cannot neglect. So we must uh, consider to import uh, adequate uh, uh, labors uh, from uh, foreign countries. And uh, at the same time, we must support those uh, domestic helpers. Uh, now we are hiring in Hong Kong, uh, so we need to train up them uh, to make sure that uh, they can take care of our uh, um, older persons uh, in a domestic setting. Uh, definitely yes, and uh, actually I have uh, paid a number of uh, overseas visits to see how they run this kind of uh, intergenerational co-living scheme. Oh, yes, yes. This kind of social innovation is uh, good not only for the uh, uh, older population, actually it's good for the younger generation too. And uh, in Hong Kong, like your university, um, uh, you are lacking of uh, various uh, hostels uh, for the students. Yes. But in the nearby neighborhood, uh, there are a lot of old folks, as you just mentioned, uh, they are living alone. And they have uh, uh, spare rooms uh, uh, for the students. So actually, I have talked to a number of uh, universities and um, to encourage them to do this kind of social innovation, which uh, actually uh, has been uh, going on uh, in Spain uh, where I visit uh, for many years and it is very successful for the university students especially the social work students to stay with uh, old folks and uh, this kind of co-living benefit both and the uh, social work students can learn a lot uh, from the uh, old folks and uh, how they uh, uh, face their uh, later stage of their life and uh, also the old folks they find is a very good company and if they can uh, at the same time to have a bit of financial gain uh, as a rental uh, it would benefit so so this kind of social innovation uh, benefit the uh, older people benefit the students and benefit the university of course benefit the government because yeah. the government they don't need to build the hostel for the universities <laughs>